thank you for staying with us on the U45 Morning Show. This is the open segment of the show now where you're free to call in and uh, share your thoughts with us. We're looking at uh, uh, the, the security operatives uh, telling us that um, they are red alert over possible threats to national security. And they are uh, seeing, we cannot see, but they are seeing that uh, it will come along the religious line. The trouble they see is going to come on a religious level or line. How true this is, we don't know yet, but when the DSS speaks, then uh, we should listen, we should listen. Uh, Northern governors are asking security agencies to redouble efforts, and um, DSS replies, we are working with sister agencies to quell threats. For now, it's a threat, threat to national security coming along religious lines. And um, uh, Mr. Fatunke, let's uh, look at that. Um, CSOs are telling Nigerians, take this warning seriously. Take this warning seriously. You, you know, um, uh, what was it? The, the former uh, uh, CBN uh, governor, deputy governor, um, Mala, 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 Malafia. Mala, thank you. He, he also warned at the stage about possible uh, 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 disturbances in the country. And they were saying, take this seriously. I remember watching that video. Yes. Now, DSS is saying something. The difference is that DSS is tying their own to religion. Mm. Uh, how do you think religion could easily cause a national uh, unrest? Yeah. Before I start that, um, Ambrose, let me clearly state mine, yours, and um, very good Nigerians' um, best wishes to our armed forces. Um, that will, of course, include the DSS and our security services as we prepare for our Armed Forces Remembrance Day, yeah. uh, which, will, which, 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 which is in the offing. Yes, um, the um, a lot of them have lost their lives. Mm. Um, even within peacetime, I remember the young lady, Harutile, yes, uh, the, the, Air Force, the uh, lady that, um, that was killed, all geared towards ensuring that uh, we remain safe. Having said that, uh, the DSS is empowered under the law to do what we have done. I'd like to commend them. I know at one point in time we had SSS or DSS uh, that transformed um, into DSS in this country, and uh, we had the kind of unrest that started with stoking the fire in what we have now seen to be the Boko Haram, you know, uh, whether it's going to be the Chibok um, adoption, slaughtering of a uh, student February 14, 2014, you know, uh, in Yobe, um, to Dapchi, to, to Lea, and Waterview. Now, I deliberately went back onto this because no Nigerian must say you've not been hearing a bit of an undertone. Um, is it because she's Christian? Okay, the insurgents decided they are going to do certain things. Um, why, why pick a Christian girl and what have you? Not to say in any way that Muslims, my brother Muslims and sister Muslims, have not also suffered maybe doubly, mm. triply. Your question to me, that how do I see the point about religion coming in? Yes. And I'm going to be very frank. I'm going to use a concept that we call emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence is understanding things that surround you. Some people call it body language. Some people, you know, without you saying certain things, I know kind of where you are going. Uh, so I need to put some things in place. Um, I believe that the DSS will not have the political clout and the capacity to state my prayer, like I will law in his days will, will have said, is that I'm wrong. My prayer is that what I want to say here is going to be wrong because I'll be happy that it's proving wrong. 
I was going to make the point that the DSS will not have the political sagacity to also say, like we're finding in the US, where the institutions of government are standing up and saying truth, even to powers that be, that the religious undertone is being formulated from the top, at the very, very, very top. Um, uh, Mr. President, through his action and in action. Action because I see a deliberate steps in trying to stem some of these things uh, in the tide. Usually, in my honest view, after the horse has bolted from the barn, I must say. Um, we've not had his hands on, okay, and then uh, what we now find is calling the security chiefs and, you know, rolling out, we have to do this, we have to do that, and we have to do that when a lot of people are dying. That's number one. Number two is the fact that uh, when this current regime started, it exacerbated in the situation that Fulani headsmen and headers clashes were ongoing. And I know general statements were made by Mr. President we did not get specific. To say, for instance, this is not acceptable. If you are Mieti Allah, and I have made some pronouncements that we need peace, and even if you have been hurt one way or the other, it is not for you to take the law into your hands. We did not get that. Mm. What will you call that? Thirdly, situations where Mr. President will tell an inspector general of police that I have heard of some untoward things happening in the countryside. You go there and go quell it. And for months, only for us to hear the same Mr. President now saying, I gave the order, I didn't know he, he, he did it. Didn't tell it what does that tell you? Um, the center cannot hold, okay? And Mia Anachi has taken over the earth. Mm. Yitz, you know, the poet Yitz made, made that statement. So we should not all continue. Now, there are so many I can tell you. I can also tell you that what we are having is not too far different, especially since December 25th or about to, uh, December 24th of year 2020. When our revenge and take it or leave it, call him whatever names, I think he's one of the best friends that this present regime has. I'm talking of Reverend Father Bishop Kuka made that, those statements in looking at you straight in the eye, not what you want to hear, but saying that things have gone. Bananas. Is it that we do not have the kidnappers? Is it that we do not have the hoodlums? Is it that in, in any week we do not have people being killed mindlessly? And we have a Mr. President who we are now told sees further than what we see. We are the ones being killed. And we have somebody who sees further than we that will be killed. And all what we get, unfortunately, is commiseration. We are going to do something until the next one happens. How, in your view, do you think people of different cleavages, whether you call them Christians, whether you call them Muslims, whether you call them traditional religionists, in any way, will not begin to react and read body uh, language of, of uh, our policymakers? Mm. I am afraid the truth of the matter is that DSS has identified this. The devil is always in the details. Yes, Ambrose, you don't need to know. I don't need to know the nitty gritty. <laughs> but Ambrose, you know, I don't need to really know. But I can begin to feel. I can begin to feel if action is being taken. If that statement has been made, what has been lined? to ensure 
that we nip it in the bud. What have we gotten? The Christian Association of Nigeria has come that that statement was made because of we Christians. Abba, I am a Christian. We must not continue to look at things with such narrow prism. The Mori could not then come and then counter that and say, well, yes, you are the ones that are saying that it's only Christians. And what have you? Truth must be told. The undertone, if you put your ears to the ground, there is so much unhappiness among the faith religions. The interreligious, um, you know, that was formed to begin to look at things that now takes this back to our obas, our emias, and our obese, it's not working. Everybody is just not looking. So don't like I said, I pray I am wrong, but the truth of the matter, mm. as we have in Nigeria, we talk about planlessness. Maybe they are working, we don't see, okay. but what we see mm. is that people are dying. Yeah. It gives me that impression that something is just not happening, mm. and I do not have the confidence I do not have the confidence. Amoteko will come and then say, you politicize it. Okay, let's restructure education. You politicize it, just grab, grab onto it. Let's look at what is happening in the railway. You politicize it. Everything goes down to the fact that we must restructure Nigeria. We must rethink Nigeria. Mm -hmm. It is not a preserve of some people that believe that the only value they are going to add to this country, Ambrose, is to sit every Wednesday at an executive council in Babariga and Agbada and be saying, how much have we made? This is what we have paid. This is what we paid to, this is what we paid for this uh, contract and what have you. I have not seen any creative to say, this spot that is dwindling, how can I increase it? Yes, I know a lot has been done in terms of uh, in agri. Well, look at agri. Positive things that uh, Akiomi um, additional did yes, in indeed. the previous regime followed fantastic things. And at the same time, this same agri is one that farmers will go to their farms and they are going to be beheaded. What kind of message are we sending? My message to you, to me, and to Nigerians is the fact that I think ESS have done what they need to do. I think pressure groups, the national assemblies, the state assemblies, should put their ears to the ground. We should go back. Mm -hmm. That a lot of unrest is brewing. Rather than, and one of the things that I tell you, Ambrose, that makes me feel very, very uncomfortable is that DSS made that statement a few days ago. Huh? Weeks? Days ago? And you were expecting some things, even though you are not showing the details. But today, as I'm speaking with you, we hear that some Muslim youths are issuing threats to <laughs> Father Kuka that he has to yes. leave Sokoto. Yes. Is, that, is, is that part of the plan? If that was not part of the plan, what are we doing? What is my dear Rivad? And I have a lot of respect for him. The and Sultan of Sokoto, Mr. President himself. Yes. This is now the time to say, hey, no, this will not happen under our nose. It's not being, <laughs> being autocratic. You know, I think the picture is the money shows the day, and if that is not being planned, if mm. that is not going on, you now expect me, Ambrose, to now not read religious undertone. I think that's a point there, but don't you think this is the best time for the DSS to begin to meet with religious leaders if at all the CD4 in this size come in again, Ambrose. We have just spoken, I'm sorry. Please, my name. We've just spoken common sense, isn't it? Yeah, you just spoken, you just spoken common sense. And my own assumption is that that is happening. But my experience of what I've seen about my country, Nigeria, mm. is that some of these little low-hanging fruits, as you have mentioned, you may be shocked that it's not happening. We had COVID. 19 wave one, the whole, we were caught pants down. Mm. We knew COVID-19 wave two was going to come again. We are struggling <laughs> with, with um, the vaccines and what have you. 
So I, I, I had expected that something was already going to be done. Mm. It was not done. Nasu, Asu, I had expected that it was going to be a whole something that to look at the whole gamut of the problem and begin to solve them. So what has government done? They've <laughs> satisfied Nasu after, uh, 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 after nine months of pregnancy of her, of her teenagers, who, by the way, is going to increase our population from 201, <laughs> population that we have not planned to feed, population that will joined the numbers in you know mm. uh, uh, schools dropouts and what have you so you are saying you expect the ss to now be meeting i expect it too okay. i hope so i hope so this is now the time but a, a government that hardly communicates with its people mm -hmm. that things are done problem. by way of okay this is what That's i this is what problem. i feel this is what what, what yes. that does not communicate and we, well, as I much as i expect them to communicate uh, i think you are right I think we need to put pressure on them to, be, to, to do what is right. And I, I think Nigerians uh, have a right somehow to demand uh, a, a response to the threat uh, by the uh, youth leaders uh, to uh, Bishop Cooper. Because that would be a major signal to what we're talking about. If government or Precisely. the DSS could respond to that threat and denounce it, condemn it, but if they keep quiet, then it means that um, there is complicity. We have, we have more well, they have kept quiet for about five years, um, okay. going to six years now. Hmm. Um, whether it's going to be Mieti Allah, whether it's going to be OPC, whether it's going to be MEND, um, at the end of the day, hmm. uh, the only time uh, I have to give this, uh, not necessarily that I'm endorsing it, the only time I've seen some bit of action was IPOB, when the government then said, no, this is not going to happen. Mm -hmm. We are mm. going to brand you a terrorist organization. Yes. Are you saying we don't have For terrorist sweet. organizations yes. in some other parts of Nigeria, including <laughs> what, so, some that are brewing because that was yeah, swift in and my decisive. own southwest? Yes. So, swift and decisive. so, so, so and you've decisive. got to be you've got to be swift. You've got to be decisive. But then again, Ambrose, <laughs> I have to say this quietly. Um, perhaps you can only give what you have, and if you do not have it. I can say to you authoritatively, Donald Trump mm. thought he had it. He never had it. Yeah, yeah. But institutions of state yes. all came together yes. with one voice. I said, this is the way. And said, no, this is the way we are going to go, yeah. irrespective of what you do. Yeah. I think all institutions of the Nigerian state, mm. written or unwritten, should all come and say, this bloodshed is, is it not? It's not just uh, things that we want. I will look at whoever. Because the box stops on a person's table yeah. and say we are not going to accept this. Okay? Okay. Um, we cannot scan that any further. Uh, first time is up and uh, we don't have details. But as uh, we have said here, uh, let's nip that threat in the bud. Let it not happen. And uh, when religious statements are made that provocative, I think it is the duty of the authorities in charge, the duty of government to respond appropriately. Yes, uh, yes. I, I'm, I'm, Ruta, I'm so sorry. Mm. Uh, I think this is very important, and that's you and I. Um, I live in a neighborhood, and then we have people that you call guards and what have you. Please begin to pay attention mm -hmm. to what these guards are doing. Um, just lately, my guard did not tell me, but somebody mentioned it to me, that any time we went to sleep at night, a particular building, in Lagos, yeah, mm. I live in Isolo. We are coming with um, these Okadas. What is the nature of the Okada? And I hear that one of the Okada people comes to, to, to talk to you. So what is it? Oh, it's my friend. There is no problem. So I went out and I observed. I was told it is 10 Okadas on average. Only for me to discover that there were about up to about 40 Okadas. Then I tried to, you know, friendly. What is happening here? Oh, we just came to sleep. Ah, you just came to sleep. Hmm. I have to inform the security agencies. This is happening. I don't know hmm. the nature of what is happening, but this is something we have to try and see how to nip in the bud. Because sooner than later, you are going to hear one thing or the other happen. It says it's a Muslim, it's a Christian, whatever. So please, as hmm. citizens, we must all be alive don't let us just close our gates and say 
we are we, we are safe, but we must make sure find out what is going on around us. Around us. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, thank you for for that because uh, we are generally negligent of things happening around us. We don't just care. Thank you so much for that. Um, that's about it on uh, the security threat. Um, let's quickly, just in a few minutes, look at this uh, vaccine. Um, some people say it's good news for us. Uh, Nigerian scientists are assuring the government that uh, th they're coming up with something, or they could come up with something that will tackle COVID-19. Whether it's COVID-19 or not now, but the idea that they are coming up at last, at last. Because I say at last because I had no the level of in, the, the intelligence. I, I don't know any other word to use now. You, you cannot say we lack intelligence. You cannot say we lack knowledge. You cannot say we, 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 we don't know what to do. But we are not just doing that. So for scientists to come up now and say, oh, there is something in the office. Does that make you happy as a Nigerian? Yeah, it makes me happy as a Nigerian. Mm -hmm. um, very much like... Um, Professor Awujobi of Blessed Mori, yeah. Memory also came out some time back mm. and that he could manufacture made in Nigerian cars yeah. and um, it was scorched, mm. not because of yeah. lack of knowledge, yes. but because they are joining things that should support that should, did not happen. Um, very much like uh, Professor Chikeobi and his wizardry in mathematics that we could use mathematics to say if A is equal to B and B is equal to C, it's likely that C is going to be equal to D. And then we ask him to shut up. Yeah. He died in his grave. Yeah. Back to the 60s, when UCH had the Institute of Tropical um, Medicine that attracted people from nooks and crannies of the world, and they started looking at the African or the Nigerian factor, starting with malaria to yellow fever. <laughs> we are producing yellow fever vaccine in this country. Mm. Yes. And we are no more producing it. Why? Why? Because of the big C. Mm -hmm. You know what the big C is? Mm -hmm. The corruption <laughs> and the lack of capacity, <laughs> and lack of compassion, and lack of character. That's what the big C is. But let's just take the corruption. Why will I be producing vaccine and I'll be selling it to help people yes. when I can connive with, with multinationals in a polio vaccine that I know, quote and unquote, will come and disable our people? And I'll be smiling to the banks. That is lack of compassion. And that's lack of capacity. So that institute was turning out Professor Ade. Uh, um, um, Professor Lambo at that time, yeah. there were two Lambos. There was one other Lambo, um, there was a mulatto in traditional medicine. Yeah. And it was ongoing. And they were making a lot of research into how to use alternative medicine. The bags that have been taken to make the chloroquine, which is, which is now banned, all came from these herbs. Yeah. Then suddenly, along the line, somebody felt this is money that will be coming little by little. And in any case, with the big conspiracies of the fact that we are known in Nigeria not only to be diverse in terms of population, we should just be a market that we should just be dumping things into. And using our people, as was done during the slave trade, we turned around and went for the field they look at and abandoned our people. I'm coming to your point. It's not as if we don't have the brains. Alas, many of those brains are on drain outside Nigeria. And once they stepped outside Nigeria, you see the wonderful things they are doing. These are medical doctors. This is a field of engineering. Jalani and Liu, who I know is serving in this government. I still hope he's still serving in this government. He was one of the best designers that Ford Motors have produced. He's here in Nigeria. 
What impact do you see that he's making one way or the other? Because I have money that I can borrow still, huh? and I can become a legislator, I can become governor, I can become a um, state assembly member, and I can become president, I can become a minister. I did not begin to look at the interest of my people, even though when, they, when you accuse me of that, I'll go and look for uh, Napep and whatever it is I give to you <laughs> to, to, keep, to keep your mouth shut. Now, at the advent of COVID-19, precisely, precisely May, June of year 2020, the Presidential Task Force on COVID through the Minister of Health. And my brother that I know, the Minister of State for Health, have all the respect for him, our River Senator Olorun Mamora, came out and told Nigerians that parts of funds from that budget of year 2020 were that they were going to fund research into hmm. our own local grown. Okay, let's just hold there and hear from Phillips. Uh, he's calling from Shomolu. Hello, Phillips. Hello, Phillips. Hello, Phillips. You're on the line, aren't you? We're almost running out of time. Are you not putting him on or what's... Okay. We've lost the call. All uh, right. Um, it's a pity. It, 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 Maybe Phillips will, will, will try. I hope we have the time. We just have a, a lot of money was mm. okay. Wait, 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 wait. Some yes. money. Mm. Eh? Mm. We can do. It was good faith. What has happened to that funding? Mm. What has happened to that funding? I hear Nabda came and said, Nigerians, if you know you have an answer mm -hmm. to COVID, please come Co forward. Oh, yeah. Our people demand because perhaps they were not sure. Mm. Remember during the Ebola time, uh, Professor Morrissey, who was talking about Orobo, mm -hmm. uh, you know, this uh, uh, mm. bitter cola and what have you, we've not extended that. Mm. Not 100% fault of government, also 100% fault of us. You know, a friend of mine called me from the U.S. and said, what is, what is this about Nigeria? Well, it was predicted that you people were going to be dying <laughs> you know, mm, on the streets, yes. And that is not happening. Mm -hmm. Why is that? I gave him my explanation. I said, look, you know what? Whatever it is that's your explanation, my expectation, Hakim, begin to research a little bit more into how your children are born, how they are fed from breast, how, you know, they begin to gather immunity of mm -hmm. some sort. It may take time, but at the end of the day, this might be what you are really going to be, be selling to the world. Yeah. When the Chinese started yeah. with the alternative medicine, everybody yes. was laughing at them. Mm. It's now becoming what I claim. So, Professor Femi Babalola, let me call him out. Thank you very much for your faith in Nigeria when the likes of you outside this country are making a lot of money. Okay. Professor Bode of loot. Mm. thank you very much for still believing that we can do something. Mm. Hopefully, hopefully, the structure of state in this country, mm. Mr. President, beyond your vice, and I know it's the same government, the National Assembly, state assemblies, local governments, we must get back into giving support and the support has to be money that is structured. It's not going to be something that is given like a COVID. Okay. And we are not able to, apart from saying we collected so so and so billions, mm. how Goodness. have we deployed yes. them? How have we accounted for them? That's always a major issue. How yes. have we used <laughs> best procurement okay. to put square holes with square pegs? Yeah. That remains a challenge, I must tell you. And um, that's why we must keep talking, um, keep reasoning together. Um, 
we would have loved contributions from you. Uh, Philip, sorry we missed your contribution. The line didn't go through. But the show continues tomorrow. We must not get tired of talking and discussing what concerns us, what matters to us. Because that's the way forward. If we all keep quiet, then more things will go wrong. I want to thank you, Akin Fatuke, for coming on the U45 Morning Show today. Thank you very much. Ambrose. I think we would normally go or leave with uh, some food for thought because it's good that we think about certain things we do and certain things that happen to us too. Let's just listen to this. Between the USA and the UK, the two most sophisticated advanced civilizations, there are 27 million persons addicted.